So for the last four or five months, I've been working on a video about this. I'm really excited to talk about it. I understand this is a little bit more in depth than I would normally go. I hope you'll at least find this somewhat interesting. But regardless, before I start, I should explain some things. This right here is a picture taken on 35 millimeter film. And this is a picture taken on six by nine medium format. And this is a picture taken on four by five. This is to scale. So imagine all the detail you can fit in a 35 millimeter picture, depends on the film stock, and multiply that by like 16. Also because of physics, background blur is like, there's a lot of it. So naturally this is something that would interest me, but when you shoot 4x5, something you often use is a view camera. It's just bellows with a lens, and you have like a big towel over your head. And that's because you're looking at this ground glass on the back of the camera and it's inverted and upside down. Not the most portable thing in the world as if film wasn't complicated enough. Now there is other things. There's like a speed graphic um, and things like it, which use a range finder. But this is neither one of those. It's an SLR, you know, like a classic SLR where you can see through the lens. This is one of those but for four by five, kind of unusual. But let's be honest, you wanna see what it can do. Like who cares about the camera? Let's see what it does. Look at this, look at the background blur. This was taken on film that was made before the moon landing. This is a picture of a corpse flower. You can see there's quite a bit of fog over here, unfortunately, but I still like how it turned out. This is another one on expired film. I found the snake in the woods. This is all I'm using the stock lens that this camera came with. Its maximum aperture, I think, is like at 4.5. The wind has settled down just slightly, and I am here with the Graflex. You use this over here to focus. You have a shutter button over here to fire. But what's really interesting about this is when you turn it around and look at the back of it. This is the shutter curtain. At first glance, it doesn't seem like anything super crazy. You have six different shutter tensions. So six different speeds you can use. But then as we go through these, you'll notice they have different sized openings progressively getting smaller and smaller. And that is how you're able to get much more than six shutter speeds. There's a very handy chart that tells you all the different shutter speeds and tensions. This is three eighths at two, which is, should be 137. As you shrink the opening, the less amount of time the film is being exposed to light. And that's how something like 114 years old can do up to one one thousandth of a second. I gotta say, going up to this high of a tension level freaks me out. It's like trying to get your grandma to run in a 5K. Let's check that out. Oh, damn. So I got two compositions I'm interested in. One I wanna do in portrait. So we're gonna flip it on its side and attempt to fire the shutter and see what we get. Oh, it looks, that looks fine. All right, I guess let's give it a shot. This one is slightly off focus. Unfortunately, if you don't hold on to the focus knob as you're taking the picture, it can kind of slip out of alignment and that's what happened here. As for the portrait one, super blurry, but frankly, I'm surprised it turned out at all given that I was holding it like this while trying to not get blown off a hill. We're preparing the shot here. The shutter is probably going to shake the camera. Um, down here, it looks pretty good. I'm, I have something for you. I think it would be kind of interesting if we had the lamp over there in the background. That looks good. Thank you. It'll be no surprise to you that these pictures came out pretty underexposed. Something I will say is that I was taking it at like probably one tenth of a second on this tiny tripod. The fact that anything is discernible is beyond me. For the majority of the time when I was writing this video, this was working really well. The shutter was the original one. And after taking it outside when it was kind of cold, it got kind of like weird, which I don't blame it. Check in with me in like 90 some odd years and see how I'm doing. If I don't want to go outside in the cold, I'm doing pretty good. The shutter curtains on these are coated in a rubber, which degrades over time and curtain sticking or pinholes developing in it is not unheard of. It needed to be cleaned and I sent it off. This just got back from Griffin in Canada who repaired it for me. It's so much snappier. Like, listen to this. Like, it's super snappy and compare that to this. This one still has its original shutter curtain. This guy's kind of interesting because you'll notice it's been modified. Over here we have, it's um, some way to connect a flash to the shutter. Over here, we got uh, an additional tripod mount, which is kind of interesting. And up here, there's a speed graphic viewfinder. Isn't that fun? I guess you could focus on infinity and then look through it. I, I don't know necessarily how useful that would be 
but it certainly is not hurting anything being up there. When I first got this, I was looking at it and I was very confused because you can see there's a wire right here and it's been added and I was like, what is that for? And I've realized that it would hold the door down like this at a 90 degree angle above the lens, kind of acting as like a hood which is a really cool idea. I think the Series D Graflex SLRs had the lens cover acted as a hood. You can tell that somebody really loved this camera. This is a Series B Graflex. There's no like issues with that, but something that does make it kind of not necessarily my favorite is the lens mount. You can unscrew the lens from this. It's interchangeable. But on the original Auto Graflex, it's just a lens board. And you're able to customize so much more when you have a big lens board. Let's take a look on the side or the bottom of the camera and you'll see this right there. That's a tripod screw mount. It's the same one that most cameras have on it. The standard like one fourth inch or something. And that's really crazy that that hasn't changed. It's the same exact mount. The reason one of them's on the side brings up an interesting point. They made rotating back models of these where this back part would rotate and you could choose between taking landscape and portrait pictures. But neither of these have rotating backs. They're landscape always. And in the instruction manual, they're aware of this. And it's like, how do I take pictures in portrait? It probably took a bit of engineering and some brainstorming, but they recommend take the camera and flip it. Or the tripod thing's here, so flip it. Genius. It's a perfectly good solution, but it was so funny to me when I saw that in the instruction manual, how they pointed it out as if they're like, well, don't you worry. We figured it out, but they did figure it out. So, you know, kudos to them. While I'm here and while I'm still conscious, this is the big one. I shouldn't be doing this. All these cameras have handles on them, but two out of the three of them are broken. I don't trust them for a second. Anyways, don't talk to me or my son ever again. This guy is a Series B 5x7. 5x7. Larger than 4x5 and it's in an SLR. It's so exciting. It's my favorite thing. If you know somebody getting rid of a home portrait camera, contact me, please. Thank you. But this guy is a little sad right now because it's old and it's not fully working. The shutter is not doing too hot. As you can see, ooh, and the tension knob is, it's painful to use, honestly. Ooh. Also, looking in a five by seven waist level viewfinder is surreal. It's just so cool. Something I've noticed is focusing on these are relatively difficult because the ground glass is very coarse. There's no focusing aid in the center at all. This one's also a Series B. So again, it doesn't have a lens board. But that's all right. Do me a favor here and pretend you're some random just person. You're, you know, out on your morning stroll and you see this. If you look through there at the right angle, you can see my face looking in. This is a 4x5, old fashioned 4x5 film holder. And this is what these cameras take. And it's, it's pretty simple. You know, you slip your 4x5 film in there while you're in the dark. You lock it, you put a little thingy there. Then when you're ready to take a picture, you pull out the dark slide. Problem is though, you're only getting two shots on each one of these. Two shots can take a long time. But if you're back in the day, a press photographer, you're going through quite a few at, at a, in a speedy amount of time. So that's why they came up with this. And this is really something. This is a four by five magazine back. And I had to make my own dark slide because the real one, it didn't come with it. Inside here are a series of 12 plates. And what you have to do is load each plate with film. You stick it in here. You're taking a shot, you remove the dark slide. You take a picture. You wanna load the next shot. Here's what you do. You grab this little lever down here. You pull it and watch this. It grabs the plate and yanks it into this leather bag. You have to push this lever back in. You grab it while it's in this leather bag and you push it so that it goes into the back above the, the last plate. And you can see through the window here, the number change. Oh, yeah, okay. Perfect. So now we know our next shot is ready to expose. Isn't that crazy? I don't even know how it works, um, but it works pretty well. It's baffling to me how this was even conceptualized. Let's put this all together, all right? You're not even a photographer if you're not walking around looking like this, all right? Ooh, wow, nice and tight, okay. Don't look at me like that. Check it out, okay. You got the lens board in the front, crank on the side, leather baggy. I mean, you know, what's not to like?